Hello, this is Dr. Claire Seaton. Hi, this is Connie Yang. And we're here to talk about resources to help you care for your pediatric asthma patients in the outpatient and emergency room settings. So just to introduce ourselves, um, in case you haven't heard of us, um, my name is Connie Yang. I'm one of the pediatric respirologists here at Children's, um, and I help to run our asthma program. And Dr. Seaton is a pediatrician who also works in the asthma clinic and is leading a lot of our Q, uh, quality improvement projects uh, throughout the hospital and the province. All right, so we're hoping that by the end of this webinar, um, people are going to know where to access the provincial guidelines for both outpatient and emergency room management of asthma, and also um, that you know what the different knowledge translation resources are uh, available for both practitioners and families. So our goal is really to provide excellent asthma care and consistent messaging in all of the settings where asthma patients are seen. And um, I think this is particularly something that we've noticed within our own hospital. Uh, depending on if the patient's seen in the emergency room, the inpatient ward, or our clinics, they get slightly different messages, which can be quite uh, frustrating for families. So one of the drives to develop a lot of these resources and guidelines has been that no matter where a patient is seen, both within the hospital and outside, but also across the province, that they're hearing the same thing from all of their care providers. So a bit of a year in review, um, this was 2018. So there are about 50,000 kids in the province uh, who have asthma, that's about one in 20 kids. Uh, for those of you who are super keen on epidemiology, I can answer questions about how we get to that number and why that number sometimes changes a little bit. Um, but out of all of those kids, only 6% will have had an emergency room visit, 1.5% with a hospital admission and 0.1% requiring the ICU. 2018 was a good year. We did not have any pediatric asthma deaths. Usually we have one asthma-related death every single year in the pediatric population. Um, part of the reason to sort of talk about this is just to sort of highlight that even though there are a lot of kids with asthma out there, if you're seeing a patient who's been in the eMERGE or who's been admitted to hospital, that is a very small percent of the total asthma kids. And so I think those kids have already self-selected themselves to show you that they're prone to exacerbations and they need to be monitored a bit more closely. The majority of the acute care visits are in kids two to six years old. And as many of you are probably aware, that sort of terminology and diagnosing asthma in younger kids has sort of been a push over the last few years. Um, about 75% of the acute care visits happen from September to March. So it's a generally pretty predictable thing every year. We know when the viral season is happening. We know this is um, the typical trigger for most uh, asthma exacerbations. So uh, first off, we wanted to just chat briefly about the outpatient guidelines. So these guidelines were released back in 2015. It was a collaboration between BC guidelines and GPAC um, and Child Health. Health BC. And essentially the point of developing a set of guidelines um, was that, to be fair, there was already a provincial set of guidelines and we just wanted to update them and make sure they were sort of pediatric specific. So this guideline is for kids all the way from 1 to 18 years of age. It goes over asthma diagnosis, how you should assess for asthma control and risk factors for future attacks, and talks about sort of non-pharmacologic and pharmacologic treatment of asthma. This is where you can access these guidelines. So it's on the BC Guidelines website. And if you log onto that website and look up uh, pediatric asthma, um, you'll see both the guidelines as well as the different resources that were developed to help with the translation of that guideline. So the main sort of resources that we created was this asthma action plan. So there are two different ones, one for kids ages one to five, and then another for kids six to 18. The reason with, that we split them up is because on the back of the action plan was all the different inhalers and how to use them, and we couldn't fit all of them onto one plan. So we sort of did the inhaler uh, devices that younger kids use on one plan, and then for the older kids, all of the sort of dry powder ones, as well as sort of the ones with the spacers. Um, there's also this sort of appendix that shows you all the different arrow allergens in the province and when they tend to peak throughout the season. So for those kids who have perennial symptoms, you can start to plan a little bit uh, around sort of asthma triggers. And then lastly, an asthma care flow sheet, which just provides some reminders of what things um, should be assessed during an asthma clinic visit and sort of helping you to keep track longitudinally of what's been done. because. 
Um, in sort of a busy practice, you're not going to have time to review everything, but at each visit, if there's sort of a small piece of education that's done, it sort of helps you keep track of what's been done over time. Uh, the last thing that was part of the guidelines is sort of an asthma inhaler guide. These exist, but often they're put out by pharmaceutical companies pharmaceutical companies. So we just wanted to have one that was sort of a non-pharma um, brochure, which just shows you what all the different inhalers look like. Also sort of how many doses are in each inhaler, as well as what strengths the inhalers come in. And then every GPAC guideline has um, a table of medication that sort of talks about how expensive each of the medications is, as well as whether it's a pharmacare benefit or not. So I'm going to hand over to Claire to talk about sort of the emergency room management guidelines. Thank you, Connie. So following from the success of that production of the outpatient management guidelines, it, it was felt um, by a group of pro professionals in Child Health BC that they needed to standardize the emergent care pathway. So for both emergent care and emergency department settings. So this is now the newly released um, emergency and urgent care setting guidelines for pediatric asthma. The original um, guidelines were published in April and May of 2018, and the recent update in May of 2019 um, is got details about the education guidelines that are available. This is a PRAM-based algorithm for asthma management. So that's the pediatric respiratory assessment measure, which uses um, a clinical assessment to guide acute management based on whether a child has mild, moderate, or severe symptoms of asthma. This is just the summary slide, which shows those mild, moderate, and severe categories. I'm just gonna highlight here this PRAM score of naught to three for mild, moderate would be PRAM score of four to seven, and then severe, asthma exacerbation with a PRAM score of 8 to 12 or signs of impending respiratory failure. These guidelines, once you use the PRAM scoring, follow standardized GINA and CTS guidelines for acute management of asthma and are probably well recognized to all of you who've either worked in um, emergent care settings or walk-in clinics and, and treated acute asthma. I think the things, important things to recognize is the concept that actually, for example, in the mild category, we're still using salbutamol as first line every 20 minutes, but there's good evidence that using salbutamol via an MDI and spacer is actually more effective than nebulization, has reduced side effect profile and reduced length of stay in the emergency department and hospitalization rates. We follow the pathway down and in your mild, mild category, we are not providing oral steroids, but you are having a multiple looping back round of this pathway to, to assess whether there's been a deterioration. In our moderate set, set of guidelines for this pathway, it's using salbutamol every 20 minutes, adding ipotropium and giving an oral corticosteroid. Here at BC Children's Hospital, we use oral dexamethasone. This then shows the pathway when you need to reevaluate. And if you're in any category that's showing the severe guideline, there is a whole nother pathway looking at severe asthma management, which we're not going to go into detail today. As part of this pathway, it's recognized that not only the acute management is important, but also your discharge planning and patient education are highly important. And so this is a pediatric asthma education checklist document that has been created for use by all healthcare providers in the team that are seeing patients in the emergent care setting. This would include both medical practitioners, nurse practitioners, nurses, RTs, and pharmacists, just to name a few. It goes over things like the basics of asthma, how and when to review symptoms of control, uh, assessing techniques, when to go for help, reviewing asthma medications, what they are and when to use them, and reviewing the asthma action plan that Connie had already highlighted. Now, as part of my QI project role here, I was interested to see when I first started a few years ago that actually these wonderful asthma action plans that were created in 2015 hadn't made it onto our shop floor here at BC Children's Hospital. We see approximately 1,500 children a year with an asthma exacerbation here. And at that point, these standardized asthma action plans were not part of the standard of care. We started a quality improvement project in November 2018 
with the aim to embed the action plan into the teaching and discharge process. That involved quite a lot of work from our asthma educator and nursing staff here to do quality improvement education sessions and also just getting the systems in place to have the action plans available. The next step in this project is actually to, to watch an education video, which I'll talk about in a moment. Just to show that QI in action can actually make a difference and really work, we started in October with our baseline data education sessions and no action plans being used. And at last count, about 90% of all patients were going home with an action plan. Now, the next part of this project is actually to improve education resources to families. And as part of that, we have developed an asthma education video aimed at families and caregivers. Its main goal is to provide basic education to patients in any setting in eight minutes. It's obviously not going to replace a face-to-face -face consultation with an expert in asthma education, but it is aims to provide the basic framework for your patients and help you to have this conversation with your patients in your clinic settings. At the bottom of this is the link and we'll be sending out an email with these links for you to use afterwards. The asthma video is divided into different sections and it covers basic asthma pathophysiology, what asthma medications do and how to use them, correct inhaler techniques and trigger avoidance, and finally reviewing your asthma action plan and understanding how and when to go and get help. I'm going to hand back now to Connie to talk about another process that we've been working on to help provide your education. So we were thinking about ways to sort of disseminate the guidelines in a more meaningful way. Um, and UPCCPD, uh, who hopefully many of you are already familiar with, has a fantastic framework for providing continuing education. So um, we've paired up with them as well as with Child Health BC to develop a pediatric asthma management module. So it's an online module that you can access through UBCCPD. Um, and we'll probably be ready for um, a launch on World Asthma Day, which is actually May 7th, which is in a week's time. Um, it has been certified for main pro as well as MOC section three credits, which are those pesky ones that are a bit difficult to get. And essentially what the course does is provide a case-based overview of asthma diagnosis in children, both sort of toddlers as well as older children, how we sort of use spirometry in aiding diagnosis. Um, Second, it talks about how we manage pediatric asthma in the primary care setting, and then talks about some of the resources aimed at uh, asthma education for both families and caregivers, and as well as children. And then lastly, there's a specific module on the emergency department guidelines and the use of the PRAM score. Um, it's an interactive sort of case-based design, I think partially because we've all read a lot of guidelines and it's very difficult to sort of use them in action. So we're hoping that sort of the case-based um, interactive nature of this module will help to have those guidelines be disseminated a little bit. So next steps on this plan to sort of um, help to structure the way asthma management is done across the province for kids is that Claire is developing an inpatient guideline with a flow sheet. When that's done, it will eventually be available on the SHOP website. Um, SHOP is a plan for all of the PHSA um, hospitals to be able to disseminate their um, policies and procedures. Right now, BC Children's is not online with SHOP, but when it is, which I hear is in the near future, this is where this inpatient guideline will live. Um, we're also in plans to develop a pediatric asthma infographic and frequently asked questions pamphlet uh, with the BC Lung Association. Part of this, again, is just to provide a standard set of resources for everybody across the province to use that has consistent messaging for families. Um, in addition, I will say we have a bunch of pamphlets here at Children's, but they all look like they were made in the 1980s. So I think we wanted a bit of a refresh and reboot um, so that those pamphlets still sort of provide the information in a meaningful way. And then lastly, BC Lung Association is going to be updating the Provincial Asthma Clinic Directory. Hopefully that'll make it easier to find the different asthma clinics across the province and which ones provide care for children, as well as what kind of services uh, they provide in those clinics. So which ones do spirometry, uh, which ones are staffed by physicians or nurse practitioners and asthma educators. 
So in a nutshell, we really just wanted to spend a few minutes talking about sort of what are the different guidelines for management across the settings. Um, we didn't get too much into the content of any of those guidelines, but we'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have uh, sort of about the rationale or what's in the guidelines. Um, and sort of the idea that there is a standardized toolbox for um, managing asthma in the province. So that includes the bundle of action plans, Claire's asthma education video, as well as an education checklist. The resources which we will send out um, on World Asthma Day uh, include sort of the outpatient guidelines on the BC Guidelines website, uh, the emergency room guidelines on Child Health BC's website, and then the video, which we're going to put that link um, in the next iteration of asthma action plans um, so that it's easy for families to access.